that the Mexicans are living now is not just the Mexican problem. It's a, it's a, it's a problem of all the world. Uh, and uh, in a big part, it's a problem of, uh, of the uh, US government and the people that live in this country. So I really appreciate the invitation. Um, first, I have to explain that I have been investigating the drug cartels since 2005. Uh, when I started this investigation, uh, it was in, um, in Mexico, the violence wasn't very high. So I had enough time to, to, to make these investigations uh, in silence. So that's why I survived to die in the dive investigation and that I was able to write my book. So uh, I was a uh, journalist uh, in, uh, involved with the justice issues and that kind of things. I just was uh, a, jour a journalist who investigate and uh, who used to investigate and denounce the corruption in, in, in Mexico. But investigating that, uh, the, the corruption, that's how I, I start to investigate the, the drug cartels. On um, John, on, on 2005, the United Nations uh, gave me information about the, some kids in one area in Mexico called the Golden Triangle, where, where, where the states of uh, Durango, uh, Chihuahua, and Sinaloa uh, make a, a little triangle in the, in the borders, um, where uh, kids that were uh, forced to work in the, in the in the groves of uh, fields, in the fields of, of uh, marijuana and, uh, and amapola. So I went to there and I discovered a very different thing. These kids, some, these child, and um, since uh, seven or eight years old, start to work with their relatives with their fathers to, uh, to uh, in the fields of marijuana, like many other uh, people in that area in Mexico. I mean, I I learned that this that these kids really wasn't forced to do that job. They really want to do it. That that is the dream in this family. I was able to interview to many of these child, and um, they said that the only dream of them was became as a Chaco Guzman, or Rafael Caro Quintero, all these guys. So I spent in that area more than five or six years, six uh, days, and I, I never see any policeman there, any. I never see the army. I never see the Mexican government there. So I said, well, how these people, how these kids, how these women uh, can, can do this for many generations? And no one, and no one stop them, and no one give them any other uh, solution to their economic problems. So I came back to Mexico City, and on December of 2005, one lawyer called me to the to the newsroom where I work in the uh, the El Universal newspaper, and he he told me that his client wanted to talk with me. His client was um, a deputy director of uh, uh, the jail uh, Puente Grande, where the uh, Chapo Guzman escaped on January of, of, of 2001. And the deputy jo uh, director that was in jail, accused of uh, to help to El Chapo Guzman to escape the jail, uh, to the jail, from the jail, um, he wanted to talk with me and tell, and tell me the truth about how El Chapo Guzman get out of uh, the jail. So
So I went to talk with him. He was in jail, in, the, in one a medium security jail in Mexico City. So he started to say that, well, yes, that he received money from the Chapo Guzman to let him, to let him uh, make uh, parties inside of the maximum security, security jail. But uh, he, he didn't help him to, to escape, and no one in, inside the jail did it. So I asked who, 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 who did it? And he said, just one uh, power uh, bigger than us, uh, el presidente, the, 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 the president of Mexico. So of course I didn't believe him, because he was a criminal, he was a corrupted uh, policeman. So I asked him, and he gave me all the criminal files of the escape of El Chapo Guzman. I'm sure that I am, I am the only journalist in Mexico, and I'm, I'm sure in the world that have all these criminal files. I mean, I, I'm talking about thousands of documents that proves, really proves, in many official testimonies that, of course, the Mexican government have that they, uh, that shows that proves that the that the Chapo Guzman uh, didn't escape, of course, in a laundry car uh, from the maximum maximum uh, from the security from, from the jail. He was uh, uh, the the government, the federal government helped him help him to escape, and. Um, uh, they just uh, go to open the jail and said, well, sir, you can, you, you can get out. So when I heard that, and I start to read the criminal file about El Chapo Guzman, I learned who was that man. And that man, really believe me, is nobody, is nothing. He's not more intelligent than you and me. He just, study to the third grade of school. I mean, he, he, he almost, he just can't read, and he, he cannot write. He, when he was in jail, he has to ask to their partners to write the love letters for, from, the, from his girlfriends because he wasn't able to write. This man, that is nothing, now is the most powerful drug a draw law in the world. He's the head of the Sinaloa cartel that, as the DEA said, is the now the most important drug cartel in the world. So what I learned in all these years is that El Chapo Guzman exists because the Mexican government won that he exists. And, and, I, I, and I can say also, that the, of course the U.S. government has uh, is is really implicate in this case too, because no one, no one, want to put in jail to a Chapo Guzman, because the drug business in the world is huge, and led everywhere, too many money, too much money. So uh, what I what I learned in my investigation is that exist in Mexico and many other parts of the world. Worst, worst drug lords than El Chapo Guzman. And these men are mayors, these men are congressmen, these men are politics, these men are businessmen that used to be in front page like honest people but help to these people to launder their money, and they are more dangerous. Because we know that El Chapo Guzman is the bad guy. But we don't know the other names of the people that build to El Chapo Guzman. That, they, that people are worst. Because if they pretend that they want to put him in jail and they don't want to, they pretend that they're honest, but they launder their money, and they protect him. So, El Chapo Guzman now is the most important drug lord in the world because has the protection of the Mexican government, 
and the best and, and, and the protection of many businessmen in all the world that help him uh, to launch the money. So, when we talk about in Mexico the drug uh, the drug war, that really don't exist. That thing really doesn't exist. Never exist. Any year in Mexico, never. What I learned is that uh, for decades, the federal government in Mexico used to protect the drug cartels first from the decay of 60s to the last day of the government of Ernesto Cedillo, who was the last president that became from the party pre, used to protect to all the cartels. Each cartel has a piece of the cake. Mexico was the cake. The people was the cake. And the, each cartel has their own territory and their own business. The, the Tijuana cartel, the Juarez cartel, the Sinaloa cartel, the Gulf cartel. But when uh, uh, Vicente, uh, Vicente Fox became the president of Mexico, the first president from a, a, a different party than free, the game changed. He started to protect just the Sinaloa cartel and use the power of the state against the enemies, the enemies cartels of the Chapo Guzman. So there's when the drug between the cartels exist, became, start. The, the war again between the cartels start in the, in the government of Vicente Fox, not in the government of Felipe Calderón. Felipe Calderón just follow the line. He just make the same thing that uh, Vicente Fox. He protect to El Chapo Guzman and use the power of the state against the other cartels. That's how the violence in Mexico start and became uh, um, uh, to this level. Many people, and I ask, ask to myself in, in this investigation always, is why the drug cartels didn't fight uh, um, uh, before, and why they start to, be, to, to fight against each other suddenly? They became crazy? <laughs> no. That happened because the rules changed because the government changed the rules. Of course, we are talking about corruption. If I can describe in one single word, word what is happening in Mexico is corruption. The deep reason is corruption. This man, El Chapo Guzman, now is the most important drug lord in the world because he has money to bribe officials, to buy uh, 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 governors, to buy a president, to buy agents here in USA because you really can't believe that each day you have a huge white elephant walking and crossing the border, and nobody said, I mean, thousands, tons, uh, thousands of tons of cocaine, this huge, big elephant, and no one see that, is ele that this elephant uh, crossed the border, and this, that, that this elephant is walking in the streets in New York, in California, here, no one see the elephant, of course, th this corruption is not just in Mexico. This corruption is everywhere. Where is one gram, gram of illegal cocaine in the world. That's why uh, what, what, what we, we are living in Mexico is not, a, is not a, just the problem of Mexicans. It's, it's the problem of every country where these illegal drugs are. This man, I really, I, I, I really speak to, the, to these people. The drug cartels start sending the drugs. 
The second step